All right, welcome back. We are going to be doing polarization light microscopy today. Um, so this is not our typical setup because I'd like to do a small demonstration for you before we get started. Um, this is actually a projector that we have uh, taken from somewhere in the depths of the biology building. And we have hooked it up to use uh, to display an image on a very particular screen. This is not a normal uh, screen that you, you know, normally would use uh, uh, projectors for. This is actually a, uh, what's called a lenticular screen. So it is coated in a very fine layer of metal. That's important because it actually preserves polarization as light bounces off of it. Um, so the first thing we'll do is just to sort of remind you about um, what polarized light is and how it behaves. I have here a linear polarizer um, that's nicely also marked with gradations um, that I have centered over just a small little logo of uh, UNC that I've drawn on uh, the surface of this projector. Now I have a second um, polarizer that I'm going to slide in on top of it. And you notice that because these are lined up, there's not really much of an intensity drop between uh, the uh, light passing through the first one and light passing through the second one. But as I rotate this image, or rather I rotate this first polarizer, you'll see that there is a spot at which it goes almost as dark as, uh, as if there were no light passing through whatsoever. And you'll see that is when we have them oriented 90 degrees relative to each other. And you should remember this is you know what uh, we like to call crossed polarizers. When the polarizers are perfectly crossed, then you get what's known as extinction. So we're actually going to only be working with one of these polarizers on here for the most part of today because we actually have two different polarizers uh, mounted on our two camera angles that are visualizing this screen. And you'll notice that as I move my polarizer, one screen gets bright while the other one gets dark. That's to sort of uh, act as you, the viewer, who might be holding one of those polarizers in front of your eye as I do this demonstration. Um, I could show this to a large group of people because the polarization is preserved as it bounces off of that screen. Um, so other things that polarized light can do, oh, actually I'll put this back because what we will look at now is uh, how polarization can reveal molecular order. So what I have here is just a um, you know, clear piece of acrylic. Um, it is under very little stress or tension right now. But you'll notice that as I squeeze, you'll see patterns emerge from the polarized light. It's because the polarized light is actually acting as a, a probe for molecular order. So when it's under tension, light passes through because it actually rotates polarized light. And when it's not under tension, it does not rotate the polarized light. So when you have an extinction, you see nothing when it's not under stress and you see light when it is under stress. And actually, if you rotate it such that you have, you know, not completely extinct, you can see that there are actually also darker regions where it's actually rotating the light in such a way that it gets blocked by the analyzer that are in front of our cameras. And there's other um, things besides just, you know, these acrylic pieces of plastic. I've also got a little bit of, um, you know, uh, cheap bag plastic here. And you'll notice that it is slightly sort of, um, at, it is slightly um, polarizing in and of itself. But the interesting thing is when it's under tension, you see all these brilliant patterns emerge when I stretch it. And it'll, and it'll, it will relax, but as you stretch it more, you know, you're aligning these, um, the, the molecules, the long chain hydrocarbons um, in the plastic so that they rotate polarized light, they bec it becomes birefringent. 
And we can use this uh, property of uh, polarized light to probe biological materials, not only with polarized light microscopy, but also with um, differential interference contrast, which Carrie um, spoke to you about at the beginning of class. So what I have here is something that he sort of described to you, which is a, a calcite crystal. So calcite has a really cool property that it is, um, it has two refractive indices. And you'll notice that in the um, feed that's overhead, you will see sort of a, a mirror image, or rather not mirror, but sort of two images that come through the calcite crystal. Um, and that is the calcite crystal acting as a uh, polarizing beam splitter, where it takes light of one polarization and it refracts it at a slightly different angle than light at, a, at the orthogonal polarization. But if you look at the camera feeds that are facing the screen, those have uh, polarizing filters in front of them. And so you will only actually see one image because only um, one part of the polarized light um, is making it through each of those filters. So this is effectively how DIC works. Um, you, have a, you have a DIC prism that splits light into orthogonal polarizations. You then use those, uh, that sort of two beam setup to act as an interferometer um, to sense where different, those parts of the um, beams travel different optical path lengths through your organism. Uh, and then recombining them with another crystal on top and just to, um, just to um, show you or prove to you um, that one of your, uh, I think, exam questions or a, a thing that Carrie talked about in class um, is correct, we have uh, now here a, um, we have sort of a, an extinction event on one of the cameras and I'm gonna put my calcite crystal so that it is brightest Right, and then let's count the number of bright and dark spots. So that's one bright peak. That was a dark peak right there. All right, that's another bright peak. Dark peak. Bright peak. Dark peak. So this will show you that I've only rotated this, you know, 180 degrees, and I've already seen four bright and four dark peaks. So this really should tell you that there are four, there, there are two refractive indices through this crystal. All right, and now what we will do is uh, use this um, information about polarized light and begin to probe biological samples by installing um, basically these two filters very simply on our pre-existing um, Kohler microscope. Okay, so by now you guys should be very familiar with the Kohler microscope setup. Uh, we've got our LED, our collector lens, our condenser lens, our sample plane, our objective lens, in this case our 3.5x tube lens, and our camera. Um, you're not seeing anything on the camera feed because I don't have a sample mounted yet, but um, I will be putting up sort of the same sample before, uh, as before the hair just to um, provide a nice bit of contrast uh, for what we will be doing when we introduce polarized light into this uh, system. So there is a good, uh, there's a good hair. It's again, quite dark because of all of the, uh, the pigment in there. So really take note of how, um, you know, the negative contrast that that provides. Um, so what we'll do now is sort of step one of our of building our co or our polarized light microscope is installing one of these polarizers um, in the um, right in front of the LED so that the light coming out of our LED is polarized. But before I do that, let's just um, let's double check that the light coming out of our LED is not polarized. So I'm I'm looking through this and I'm not seeing any significant sort of dimming or brightening from you know, any direction, which suggests that um, 
the light coming out of our LED is non-polarized, which is good because now we can easily control the, um, the polarization by installing one of these um, linear polarizing filters. There we go. Um, so these, this is freely rotatable, um, but I'm mainly going to be rotating uh, the analyzer, so the polarizer that we're going to be putting at the other end. Um, and now, hopefully what you should be able to see is that the light traveling through our system, you can probably see from the reflections off of the lenses, is polarized because that is what is uh, coming out of the LED, right? So that's good. But we, you can see that on our image plane, uh, we haven't really changed much. We might have dimmed our um, illumination a little bit because about only half of the total light that we were getting originally is getting through. Um, so it's not sufficient for polarized light uh, microscopy to just have you know one polarized light we, uh, source of polarized light. We have to have a way to block out anything that is, um, that any light that is not uh, rotated uh, by our sample. And so that's why we have this analyzer that we are going to put right in front of our image plane. Now normally you would want to put this in the infinity path in between the objective and the tube lens, but this has threads and it's a lot easier to mount on our, um, right in front of our camera. So we're gonna be doing that instead. It will shift the image a little bit, but not too terribly much. All right, so now you can see that we've, um, we've changed our image slightly, but I would posit that we have not properly crossed our polarizers because most of the background light on our sample plane um, is getting through, right? Most of the, the, water, the, you know, the surrounding medium is bright where, when the sample here is dark. So I'm going to just rotate my analyzer to begin to let less light in. And you can see that as I go from, you know, aligned polarizers where my um, hair is nice and dark relative to the background, as I begin to cross them, the hair will appear to sort of light up relative to the background. And that's because hair has a very nice um, sort of aligned molecular structure. I'm going to introduce this little tube to prevent some out of focus light from hitting my image plane. Right? You can see that the hair here has a really nice, um, you know, repeated aligned structure that will rotate the polarized light hitting it um, and allow it to make it past that second filter called the analyzer right in front of our image plane. Just looking around for other pieces of hair.
So the other thing that we can look at um, that tends to look pretty good under polarized lights is pond scum. Pond water is filled with small bits of algae and leaves, decaying plant life. And also, if you're lucky, you can find some protists swimming around inside of it. And they tend to be very um, active under polarized light. They tend to be very sort of, um, ro they tend to rotate polarized light very strongly. So you can see that when we've got our polarizers crossed, we get a nice bit of um, positive contrast from our sample as opposed to when they are uncrossed and it's mostly just absorption. So we'll go back to crossed and just look around our sample for a bit. Now the other thing that you'll be doing as part of this lab is um, using your cell phone microscopes and the polarizers that I've mailed you to look at interesting things. Um, so while you're watching me just look at pond scum, brainstorm amongst yourselves what things around your house or outside could you look at that may or may not look cool under polarized light. Um, things like crystals tend to look very good. Um, you could look at different liquids as they dry out and leave behind salt deposits. That might be something interesting to look at. Sand actually surprisingly looks very good because sand is, a lot of it's composed of silica. You'll be able to pick out pieces of the sand that are more crystalline and those that are dirt. Polarized lights actually use a lot in um, in geology to analyze different mineral content. Just curious, one day I was looking up what other uses for polarized light microscopy are there and geologists use it to figure out what sorts of minerals are in their samples because each one rotates polarized light in a very particular way. So that's basically it for polarized light microscopy. Um, we will see you back live, I'm pretty sure, for our fluorescence demo and then live again for our structured illumination and, um, and storm demos for super resolution light microscopy. But hopefully you guys have fun playing around with the polarizers uh, with your cell phone microscopes and we will see you in the next lab.